Now, as you can see, I've got it as flat as I can. As flat as I can. I've got a little extension bar because it just saves me lifting everything up. And now, hopefully, the stub axle, which is just down there, is going to come out. Now, the problem is because we had problems getting the CV joint out, this could be exactly the same problem. Um, to be honest, we was lucky getting that CV joint out without causing any damage. Now the pressure's just on that now, but what we've got to be careful of is these lugs here. Make sure we don't bend them or this slides out. Again, it, it is quite dangerous, but we've got to hopefully we'll hear a pop. No, it's just sliding. This is the problem now. This is the problem, it's trying to get this to, to actually do this. Even on a press, it can be a nightmare. Let's try and pack that end out. Get a bit more thickness here. Right, so let's try that. Now, I hope you can see on camera, but that is moving down. That's a great sign. Can you see that? You see it moving? Yeah. Now, perfect. So the stub axle is now out. Of this. Which is the hub. So it's now out of the hub. You can see that's the bearing. See that's the kind of the inside of the bearing. So this all is going to be taken out. So that's great news. That's come out really easy. I wasn't expecting to come out that easy considering the trouble we had with the CV joint. So that's good news. I'll show you how to get that off and put the bearing in. Now this is the part we had problems with and even now it doesn't seem to like to want to go all the way in. So what we're going to do, we're going to replace this CV joint as well. Um, but that's basically, that should just go in and out by hand so easy. And that's what we had trouble with. So I'll show you how to get this out. Now to get the bearing out, as you can see, if you look down there, you can see the circlip that's in the uh, bearing. So all you do, your circlip pliers in. Now you have to be careful because this can hit your face sometimes. Now, that's it. So take out the circlip ring. Now what we can do, we can press this bearing out. Now, again, set this up as level as you can. When you do bearings, it's always best to keep all the old bearings because you get all the old shelves and stuff. So obviously to try and push down on this with the with the balls like that, it's going to be very difficult. And if you push down on this ring, it's just going to push it out. So we get an old piece of a bearing, we shove it down, we get then a socket, and that will then force the bearing out. And this one happens to be a 38mm socket. So again, just set it up best you can in the middle for everything. press out the actual main bearing. Now normally it takes a few pumps and you hear a slight crack, just like you did with the, the stub axle, and then, then it starts going. Now, 
Simple as that. Sounds worse than what it is most of the time. Now, and this is the old bearing. You can see, she's goose. Now, obviously, the way you take, the bearing can only be pushed out and pushed in in one place. There's a big lip here, so the bearing can't be pushed out that way. The easiest way to remember it is, as you look down there, look, you can see the lip. The easiest way to remember it is, where you put the circlip, that's the way the bearing comes out. Simple as that. And now it's a lot easier putting a new bearing in because this can sit flat, no problem. Now with some bearings, these are both these are both wheel bearings. Actually, they're both on a Fiesta. This wheel bearing has a metal magnet pickup. You can't really see it because obviously it's old compared to that side. But if you have ABS, you have to get this the right way around. It's very important. Otherwise, your ABS won't work. This one has just got normal plastic ends both sides. So this one can go in any way. Where if you've got ABS, it can only go in one way. That's the only real difference. But basically, the easiest way to put this back in is the same thing. Get a socket that is this size. Do not put the socket overlapping the, the middle metal part because you'll damage, you'll, you'll damage sorry, the plastic part. Don't put a socket in the plastic part because you'll damage it. So the socket has to be just big enough just to basically cover the metal ring. Not too small so it goes in and not too big so it goes out. Right. Then, best thing to do, lube it again. Just put plenty of lube in it. Lube this. All helps. And just, re and just reverse it. Make sure it's straight. Make sure at all times it's going in straight. And like I said, the best thing about this is the bearing housing can sit dead level. So you're not worried about any unlevelness. That's a word. It's a new word for the day, unlevelnessness. Now what the first thing to do here? Now it's important that you get this straight because if this if this kicks and starts going in wonky you're going to damage the bearing it's going to mostly get stuck and you're going to need to buy everything again so now simple as that i'm going to make sure i'm going to rub it Nothing smooth and just pump it. You'll know when you hit the stopper because it just won't go any further. The bearing goes in quite easy. Now I've hit the stopper, a couple more pumps just to be sure. That's it. Now, simple as that. The new bearing is now in. As you can see, it's in. It's hit the stopper. And the way you definitely know is it might not show on camera, but you can see the slit that is designed for the O-ring. You can just see it going around all the edge there. So basically, now we're going to fit the new O-ring. And you'll know once you've got the bearing in enough, because if this O-ring doesn't fit, then obviously you know you haven't got it in. Now again, these can pop out, so best just to keep your hands close to them. I'll push it in. Now, that O-ring, is, is, that circlip, sorry, the circlip has slitted in, slitted in, more new words today, slitted in and lever over. It's gone in here, so I now know that that is definitely on. So the next thing to do is to put this back on. Before we put the stub axle back on, we need to take this off. And there's a really easy way of doing that. Now the easiest way to get this off 
People put pullers on, they do all sorts, but it just takes too long and you can damage it. Easy way to get it off is literally cut it. Now you have to be careful you don't cut too far into it. What I like to do is just cut into it and then get a chisel and I snap the rest and this slides off. Easiest thing to do is get it in the vise and you can't go straight at it straight because obviously you can see there's not enough room. So I go in at an angle. If you just come in here, you'll see, you'll see the angle I've gone in at. Now I obviously haven't gone far enough, but you can see how long that is. So I'm just going to take my time now and just make sure I, I don't hit it. Now if you hit this a little bit, don't worry about it, it's not the end of the world, but if you can avoid it, it's best to. I think that's enough. So what I'm going to do now, get a chisel, and angle the chisel and trying to hit this off. See that? And as you can see, I just slightly nipped, but I mean, that's nothing to even worry about. So that's it. As you can see, let's bought that off nice and clean. Sorted. Now with the bit you've cut off as well, like I said, it's just best just to keep them. Because they do come in handy, believe me. Now, the next thing to do, again, nice and simple. We need to now press the stub axle back into the bearing. Now you have to be careful because the bearing is split into two and if you just push that in without putting anything behind here you're going to separate the bearing. So what you need to do again get your socket make sure your socket is there on the underside so we'll show you that. Put your socket there first put this on on the underside line it up and make sure you're okay you can line it up through inside there. So I now know that's fine. Then what I'm going to do is put the stub axle, put the stub axle on top, and then press that in. But if that socket isn't there, you're going to split the bearing in two. So it's very important that, that socket's there. So I'm just going to line this up again. Put a bit of lube on it. Doesn't help. It doesn't in that, should I say? It certainly helps. Alright, we're okay there. Okay, there. Again, that has to be straight, so it's important. I just like to get it close and then just to uh, line it up exactly just like that. Straighten that up. Now I know I'm safe enough to actually go for it. And again, this should go in nice and easy. Should be no real problem with this going in. More lube to be on the safe side. Okay, well that moves. So just check that it hasn't done anything. It hasn't. That's moved. That's it, it's in. And again, good things just to check. 
make sure it spins nice and freely there's no roughness there's no it just spins nice and freely see from the back there's no damage done this is now in so that's it so what we got to do now is we'll, uh, we'll put it back little um, one how to actually remove the bearing like I said I'm going to split this up because it's just going to get too complicated and if you're searching for something you don't want to be searching for you know bearings CV joints and absolutely everything so I'm just going to split it up so this is basically as as you've seen how to uh, remove the bearing and obviously to install the bearing the next video in the series we're going to do is how to um, take off the old CV joint and put the new one on so thanks for watching subscribe Thumbs up and don't forget, get your hands dirty.